When I was four years old, Dad started taking me out for walks every day, and I loved them at first because we play a really fun game. Keep an eye out for change on the ground. Whoever collects the most coins wins. But one day, we came across a nickel that was stuck to the pavement, and Dad just wouldn't let it go. We spent an hour trying to scrape it off and screaming, Come off, you stupid jerk! Help me, Elena! I soon realized that Dad wasn't crazy. He was just cheap, and we weren't poor. Mom and Dad owned a large shoe business, but that didn't stop him from pinching pennies. On my sixth birthday, no one came because the birthday invites Dad had emailed to my classmates said, bring cash presents only and your own food. One time when I was seven, he took me to a McDonald's and handed me a coupon. Go place your order while I grab the mustard and ketchup sachets, and then you stuff as many as you can in your pockets. But instead, I went to the counter and told the guy that some lunatic was stealing their stuff. Dad was thrown out immediately, and I skipped out a minute later with my Happy Meal. His cheapskate ways made me really angry, but one day, I totally lost it. Dad was really weird about tissue paper. He kept all the paper rolls in his cupboard, and Mom and I had to ask his permission to take them. I was in the third grade when I had a friend over, and she accidentally knocked over some juice. I quickly ran to Dad's room, snuck out a roll, and started cleaning up. But just then, Dad walked in, and he screamed at me till he turned blue. My friend started to cry and said, Sir, I'll pay for the roll. Take this dollar. Please f- forgive me. <laughs> and Dad actually took it. Oh my God, Dad, why are you so cheap? But just then, Mom walked in looking really excited. I've got some great news. We're going to have a baby. Dad looked like he was having a stroke. This is too much. She used a whole, a whole paper roll. And you got yourself pregnant? And I, and I can't deal with this. He took his car keys and left while I ran to mom and hugged her. Sadly, he came back and he kept talking nonstop about how expensive another kid would be. When little Macy arrived, we were psyched. But then we found out something sad. Macy was born with partial blindness. To be honest, I didn't think it was really a big deal. I took Macy in my arms and started loving her right away. Once at the dinner table, three-year-old Macy grabbed a fork and started waving it about. It hit Dad's nose and he started bleeding. Dad had to wrap a band-aid across his nose for a few days. He looked hilarious. Since Mom and Dad were really busy with their business, they often made me miss after-school activities and parties to take care of Macy, and I usually didn't mind at all. But when I was in eighth grade, my best friend had planned an amazing birthday bash, and I was really excited to go. When I told my parents, though, they said I couldn't because they had something really important. It wasn't fair I'd be missing my best friend's birthday. I love my sister, but I really wanted to go this time. So I came up with a plan. As soon as Macy fell asleep, I wore my favorite outfit and ran out the door. I'd be back before my parents were. I completely lost track of time, and when I saw my watch, I knew I was in so much trouble. But something much worse than getting caught was waiting for me. An ambulance was parked outside our house. I rushed towards it to find Macy on a stretcher, her head bleeding. She'd woken up and had fallen off the stairs looking for me. The doctor told us that Macy's head would be okay, but she had lost her eyesight completely. What? I couldn't believe it. To make things worse, Dad turned to me and started shouting. So, Elena, was it worth going to this party that has cost your sister her eyesight? And do you have any idea what this is going to cost me in medical bills? You're so selfish! I felt like my heart was about to explode. But just then, Mom hugged me tight and glared at Dad. We're the parents! Not Elena. We're responsible for both our kids. Don't blame her. But dad just wouldn't stop making me feel guilty. One day when I was about to go meet my friends, he suddenly stopped me. After everything you've done, how can you even think about fun? Think about poor Macy, who can't have any fun. And it's all your fault. Dad, that's not really fair. Don't you talk about what's fair. Do you think it's fair that I have to pay for two daughters? One selfish and one blind? I turned away and ran up to my room slamming the door behind me and crying tears of anger and guilt. Mom always made me feel better, though, and she told me to just ignore Dad and do my own things. But it got harder to take care of Macy as she grew older. She was the naughtiest little kid. My parents hired a nanny for her, but one day when Macy accidentally sent some food flying on Dad's shirt, he threw his napkin down. That's it! I don't think that nanny's teaching Macy any manners. I think we should send her to some institution. Mom and I were horrified, and I covered Macy's ears. Send her away? How can you even say that? Well, I'm not paying for that nanny anymore. No, I'll take care of her. 
She's not going anywhere. So after that, I canceled all my after-school activities to stay home with Macy more. Well, except one. I joined the Young Doctors Club, where we were introduced to medical professionals and taught about health sciences. I found it super interesting and fun. But I got home a bit late one day, and Dad was furious. You wanted to be Mother Teresa and take care of the burden? You do it now! Forget about your stupid club and find something to do at home. Take up writing. An idiot can write stories. I did take up writing, and I wrote funny little stories that made Macy laugh. But I'd also research different biology topics and write about them. I'd even discuss them with Macy, who, as it turns out, was quite the little genius. She actually gave me some ideas that helped me with my research. One day, when I took Macy to a park, she said she wanted some ice cream. As I paid the guy and turned around, I saw that she was gone. I looked around in panic, when suddenly I heard her giggling. I ran towards the sound and found her talking to a boy around my age. Hey, you! Get away from her! Is that how you thank someone who just saved your little sister? The boy explained that Macy was running towards the busy road and he'd stopped her. I immediately apologized and thanked him, and he just smiled and left. A few days later, my biology teacher came across me in the school library and saw the notes I was writing. She looked completely stunned. This is brilliant, Elena! You wrote this yourself? She said my research was on a topic scientists had been struggling with for ages, and I was really onto something. Research a bit more on the areas I've highlighted, and let's meet in a week. When she left, I was floating through the bookshelves with joy, and I crashed into someone. Ouch! It was the guy from the park. Apparently, he was my senior at school, and his name was Kevin. I'm so sorry I didn't see you. I'm just so excited about something. I couldn't hold it in, so I told him all about my research. Turns out, the bio teacher was his aunt. He said he loved biology too, and could probably help me. For the next few days, we met in the library and discussed ways to improve my work. It would sometimes get hard to focus because Kevin was just so darn cute. One day when I got home after our session, all my happiness vanished suddenly. Dad was waiting for me at the front door, holding my research papers in his hand. He threw them in the air and screamed loudly enough for the entire neighborhood to hear. So this is what you've been doing all this time? This stupid research? What a waste of paper! And you think you'll go off and be a scientist one day? You can't! Because you have a sister to take care of, who is blind because of you. Remember? Why did Dad have to be such a jerk? I turned around and ran away. And the only place I could think of was Kevin's home. His aunt was there too and was rather surprised to see me. He quickly took me up to his room and told me something shocking. I think my aunt is trying to steal your research and publish it under her name. Turns out, some papers had fallen out from her bag. And when Kevin saw them, he realized she'd copied all my notes and written her name on them. How can she do this? As angry tears poured down my face, Kevin suddenly pulled me close. Don't be upset, Elena. We won't let her get away with it. And then he kissed me. I forgot all about my troubles for a moment and kissed him back. The next day, we went to the principal and exposed the biology teacher. She got fired on the spot and the principal made sure I got my research back. After that, I didn't care anymore about what dad said. With Kevin's help, I worked hard on my research proposal and submitted it along with my university application. And to my shock, I actually got accepted on full scholarship. Guys, would you listen to this? Harvard Medical School thinks I'll be a really valuable addition to their university. Mom and Macy gave me a big hug as they cried tears of joy. But dad, well, he looked livid. Congratulations, Elena. You can finally pursue your dreams and only think about yourself. Go live your selfish life. That's when all the years of anger came bubbling out, and I snapped. I'm selfish. I want to be a doctor so I can help people like Macy. But you are the world's worst dad and a cheap little man. I will chase my dreams, and without taking another penny from you. And that doesn't make me selfish. I love Macy, and nothing will ever change that. A month later, I packed my bags, kissed Macy goodbye, and left. After years of hard work, I finally became a practicing neurosurgeon. Kevin helped me through everything and was the best boyfriend ever. Mom and I kept in touch, and I was so happy to see Macy growing so big. But one day, Mom told me that Dad had made some stupid investments and lost the business. I started sending her money and decided that as soon as I was financially stable, I'd move Mom and Macy in with me. A few weeks later, I was shocked to see both my parents at the hospital looking really upset. Oh, Elena... Macy has a blood clot in her brain and needs surgery immediately. We didn't know where else to go. How will we even afford it? My baby sister was in danger? Mom, don't even think about it. I'll take care of all the expenses and I will do her surgery myself. During the surgery, 
I also discovered a tiny tumor pressing on her optic nerve, and I removed it along with the clot. And now we could only wait for her to wake up. When Macy finally opened her eyes and I called her name, she looked at me directly and said, Elena, I, I can see you. I can see you all. It turned out that the tumor I'd removed had restored most of her vision. It was truly a miracle. I hugged her tightly and so did mom and dad. This was the first time we'd ever had a family group hug. And I thought maybe he changed. But then he turned to me and said, Oh, my darling Elena, I always knew you were a selfless angel. You will take care of us all. How soon can we move in with you? I looked him straight in the eye. I'll take care of you, Dad, and I'll be much more generous than you ever were. But you will not be living with us. Well, long story short, Dad moved in with his sister, and I sent him an allowance every month. Fast forward a few years, and I've published several groundbreaking research papers and became a well-renowned neurosurgeon.